Welcome to our worship today here at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in North Miami. I'm Pastor Dennis Bartles, and on this Sunday, we will be celebrating the Reformation. The pyramids have been changed to red, and I've even put on my robe and my stole. It's a festive day, but most importantly, it's still all about Jesus. It was all about Jesus when the Lord God first promised a Savior to Adam and Eve and their descendants. It was all about Jesus with every foretelling of the coming of Christ by the Old Testament prophets. And it was all about Jesus at the manger, the cross, and the empty tomb. And it was all about Jesus as the Apostle Paul penned, We hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. And it was all about Jesus when Martin Luther posted his 95 Theses on October 31st in the year 1517. And it's still all about Jesus today as we receive the means of grace through word and sacrament. And it will be all about Jesus when he returns in glory on that last day. As we observe today the Reformation, we celebrate that it always has been and it always will be all about Jesus. Blessings on your worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And great is the Lord, and greatly do we praise in the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever, and he will guide us forever. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and atone for our sins for your name's sake. We, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. We come now to that time of confession, and I ask you these questions. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it, and I am a sinner. And how do you know this? From the Ten Commandments, these I have not kept. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved of God by your sins? His wrath and displeasure, temporal death, and eternal damnation. 
Do you also hope to be saved? Yes, such is my hope. And whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. And what has God, Christ done for you that you trust in him? He died for me and he shed his blood for me on that cross for the forgiveness of sins. And why ought you remember and proclaim his death? That we may believe that no creature could make satisfaction for our sins but Christ, true God and man. And that we may learn to look with terror at our sins and to regard them as great indeed and to find joy and comfort in him alone. And thus we are saved through such faiths. So what was it that moved him to die and make satisfaction for your sins? His great love to his father and to me and to other sinners. And finally, why do you wish to go to the sacrament? That I may learn to believe that Christ died for my sin out of great love as before said, and that I may also learn of him to love God and my neighbor. As you believe, so let it be. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm, the basis of which is our sermon hymn today, is a mighty fortress. And it proclaims God's presence with his people in the midst of catastrophe. And Psalm 46 was the basis for that hymn. We speak it responsively. God, a very present help. God is our refuge and our strength, our helper ever near. And therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved and the mountains fall into the ocean depths, though its waters rage and foam and the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is at our side to shelter us from fear. And there is a river that brings joy to the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of that city. It will never be destroyed. At early dawn, he will come to its aid. God is our refuge and our strength, our ever helper, ever, our helper in every need. Nations are terrified. Kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is at our side to shelter us from fear. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. He makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. God is our refuge and our strength, our helper ever near. And be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. And the Lord of hosts is at our side to shelter us from fear. The Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. God, God promises a new covenant. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will, it will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson comes from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that, that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, 
no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by, G by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did, he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where, then, is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On, on that of observing the law. No, but on that, that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. There are some songs that are just iconic and memorable. There are some songs that are so recognizable that when part of it is heard or sung, you can immediately recognize where it came from. 
For example, here's a story of a lovely lady who had three very lovely girls. What's that from? Of course, we grew up on it, the Brady Bunch. Or what if you want to go where everyone knows your name? I wish that was the church, but in this case, it's Cheers. I know you'll get this one. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a faithful trip that started from this tropical port aboard this tiny ship. Of course, Gilligan's Island. Or what comes to mind when you hear this one? Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and of course, it's a fresh prince of Bel Air. But here's one more for fun. A mighty fortress is our God. And we immediately think about Martin Luther and the Reformation. And who can doubt that this hymn, based on Psalm 46, is the same theme song of the Reformation. And it is a great theme for the life of every follower of Jesus Christ. Say it with me. A mighty fortress is our God. Today we celebrate Reformation Sunday. And we're going to take a look at both this great hymn of the church along with Psalm 46. Psalm 46 begins, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. And it's interesting that that verse was what we used the last time we basically were together in March as we talked about the pandemic and how God was going to be our refuge and strength. And here on the Sunday that we regather in church on Reformation Sunday, we look at that very same song, Psalm, God is good. But here the psalmist begins by stating the fact that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Yes, we've talked a lot about times of trouble lately. If you go way back, Louis Armstrong put it this way, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. And I believe we identify with that when we find ourselves in difficult situations and circumstances. In these past months, we may have visited that place in our minds a few times. And in that state of mind, we may have even had the thought or time or two, where's God? Has he abandoned us? I wonder where I thought, I wonder where a thought like that comes from. And of course, We know, because we have an enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking to devour us. He is also called the very father of lies. It's Satan himself, and each one of us has felt his attacks. But on this day, we stand firm on the promise of God's word. We go to Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, and it says, Be strong and be be of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Jesus is there with us in these past days, in the present days, and in the days to come. Or as Martin Luther writes in his hymn, God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it, for God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. Jesus is by our side, even in the storms of life. And we must focus on Jesus, not the storm. Remember, it's all about Jesus. And remember that he calmed the storm by simply saying, be still. And what has he promised us? This is what he says in Hebrews 13, 5. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And because we trust in Jesus, God is the first one that we go to for shelter in times of danger, in times of trouble, in times of distress. Or as Proverbs 18.10 puts it, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who strengthens and preserves us. He is the one who gets us through things. Amen? Amen. 
and he is our ever-present help. The Lord is not a backup plan or the one who helps us when all else fails. No, he is a God who is a present help. That means he is there for us in the here and the now. The psalmist continues by explaining what this means. Because he is our refuge and our strength. And when we have him as our refuge and our strength, we have nothing to fear. Verses 2 and 3 put it this way. We will not fear though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam. Though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Hey! Even if the earth collapses in some huge sinkhole or the forces of nature go crazy with global warming, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear any catastrophe that threatens either body or soul because God is our refuge. God is our strength. And this includes not fearing the fact that some of us have to, and some of you may be living on fixed incomes. It includes not fearing going through surgery and facing rehab. It includes not fearing hurricanes and stormy weathers. And it includes not fearing this pandemic called COVID-19. We don't have to fear even the death of a loved one. Remember those words from Psalm 23, verse 4? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen, when we trust in the Lord and when we put our confidence in Him, that doesn't mean that these issues won't affect us. Of course they will. But these trials and tribulations will also drive us closer to Him who is our Savior. In verses 4 and 5, the psalmist builds this on this truth. He tells us that God is with His church and His people. Listen to those words again, beginning with verse 4. He says, There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High, and God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The city of God is the church, where the gospel is purely taught and where the sacraments are rightly administered. Is a place where God dwells with his people on earth. And where is God in all this? He's in the midst of us as we are gathered here today or gathered in our homes, in our living rooms or kitchens or around the table, wherever it might be. He's been with us all these months because Matthew 18, 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. In other words, God is not ever far off or sitting on some distant throne away from it all. Rather, he is present with us in the danger, in the heartache, in the pain, in the trouble, and in the suffering of it all. He is present when the hurting family. He is present with the one who is ill from sickness. He is present with those that are struggling. Remember when Jesus was born he was called Emmanuel. That name is a beautiful name. It means God with us, and he truly is. Jesus is God in the flesh. He knows what these troubles and these dangers that we face are like. And Jesus came to earth to overcome sin and death and the devil. And it's through Jesus' death and resurrection that we receive his forgiveness and real peace that our lives desperately need. He is in our midst through his word and sacraments. Jesus is with us in this service now where he gives us the gifts of his grace. He comes to us in his word. He is present in Holy Communion where he gives us his real body and blood to nourish our souls. He's there in baptism where we put him on and we live in him. And it's through these means that he preserves and strengthens and nourishes and dwells with us. The psalmist continues in verse 6 and 7. It says, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. 
the nations will rage against the church. They might do this through laws and actions that oppose the church like gender pronouns, bathroom laws, withdrawing tax exemption status, reducing the freedom of speech and religious liberty. They might do it through persecution, whether it be physical, social, or financial. But God is with us. He's our fortress. And in him, the church cannot be overcome. Jesus' words from Matthew 16, 18 ring loud in my ministry and in your ministry too. Because it is Jesus who said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Martin Luther saw this firsthand when he, he was opposed by the Pope and the Emperor and other theologians. And despite hostility towards the church and the gospel, they both remained. Despite the hostile expert efforts of others, Luther explains in stanza two why they did not prevail. And there we sang, but for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected, who asks, who is this may be? The Lord of hosts is he, Christ Jesus, mighty Lord, God's only son adored. He holds the field victorious. The one who is with us is the valiant one who cannot be beaten. And in our last section of verses, the psalmist now moves on to, to talking about God's strength and power. He shows him as a victorious fortress. And he writes in verses 8 and 9, he says, Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. You see, the Lord shows his power and might. He breaks the weapons of war and he stops the vehicles in their tracks. And it is he who stops war and fighting. He brings peace through his judgment on hostile forces. And we long for the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns at that final judgment. He returns as the Prince of Peace and he makes an end to all wars. Amen? Amen. The prophet Isaiah wrote this, he said in chapter 2, he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. A nation will look, lift, not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. And the Lord himself in this psalm says this in verse 10. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. There again, the Lord says, be still. He says those words to you, and he says them to me. And they are a constant reminder that we don't have to worry. We don't have to be people of fear. But rather, we can relax and be still because of the powerful God who is always with us. Because he dwells in us, and he dwells with us, and he dwells through us. 1 John 4, 4 puts it this way. He says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You see, he works all things for our benefit. He works all things also for the benefit of the church. In those famous words from Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are, the called, who are called according to his purpose. The psalmist finishes this psalm with a reason for our confidence. Verse 11 is a repeat of verse 7, where again he says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We don't have to fear. Our refuge, our fortress, our strength, and our help is with us. And Luther applies this thought well with stanza 4 when he writes, He's by our side upon the plain with his good gifts and spirit. And take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife. Though these all be gone, our victory has been won. The kingdom ours remaineth. As Luther stood by, as the Lord stood by Martin Luther over 500 years ago, he today stands by each believer. And yes, Martin Luther got it right. A mighty fortress is our God. And may we get it right too. I close with this story. There once was a great churchman 
who was a missionary in a foreign country, and he had contracted a very rare disease, and there he lay dying on his bed. There, as he lay there in that bed, he was almost totally paralyzed, he was unable to see, but he was still able to hear. And as the days slipped by, the doctors sought to communicate with him and make sure that his mind was still clear. And so they asked him to tap his fingers 50 times. And he did it each day with precision, 50 times, 50 times, 50 times, every time he was asked. But then one day, he tapped his finger only 46 times. And they thought he was slipping. But the next day, 46 times again. And the next day, 46 times again. And it continued that for almost a week. And they were puzzled and wondered, what is he trying to say? It was then that a fellow missionary came to visit him. And the doctor shared that he kept tapping his finger 46 times. And why? And he says, it's because he wants you to read Psalm 46. And there this man lying on his deathbed, powerless, was still able to share the message of Jesus Christ as he typed out his faith in the 46 times. And in that psalm, what's it say? God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Today, we gather. And today, we thank God for, for Psalm 46 and for using Luther to start a reformation of re returning people to the good news of Christ's love. And we can also thank God that this reformation impacts our lives today and is at the root of who we are and why we exist as a church to continue to share with people who are slaves to darkness that the Son of God calls them to experience the same joy and freedom that Luther experienced and that we experience as well. Remember those words of Jesus from our gospel lesson? It says, so if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. We are free because of Christ. And brothers and sisters, that is what we celebrate today on Reformation Day. May God bless you. Amen. This morning for the Apostles' Creed, we're, we're going to do it a little different, and it is a responsive, and I invite you to join me now. I therefore ask, who are you, you who are gathered here today? Do you believe in God the Father? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for all people in their very circumstances. O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Strengthen the church here and wherever it gathers around your word and celebrates the blessed sacraments. Grant confident faith to the clergy and laity and pastors in the congregations and missionaries in distant lands, elders in the faith and newly baptized alike. Help us to put all our trust in your protection and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strong creator, wherever people call out to you as the earth gives way and mountains move into the heart of the sea and mountains tremble, hear their cries and keep them safe. Awaken courage and wisdom in those who search and rescue, those who provide physical and spiritual counsel, and those who offer long-term support of body and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, when nations rage and kingdoms totter, use the earthly powers that be to move the nations and their leaders to seek ways toward peace with their neighbors and stability within their borders. During this time of national decision-making, please grant the citizens of this country wisdom to vote for the best candidate with the right agenda for the next four years. We pray for all to exercise this right to vote and bless this country and keep it strong. You who make war cease to the end of the earth, provide courage and compassion to all who work for peace and protection as they are deployed abroad, and all who maintain concord and order within our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, stream joy and gladness to those who wait for the dawning of a new day, those dealing with long-term ills, this pandemic called COVID-19, for unemployment, discrimination, unjust imprisonment, strife in families, and the loss of loved ones. Today, we especially pray for Agnes Simon and Steve Opoka, Pastor John Zender, Ray Penlam, Lloyd Spiro, John Jordan, Melly DeSante, Pastor Storr, Edie Mobley, Jenny Lynchner, Vera Durham, Davina Bino, Cindy Annis, Allison Julia Dowdy, Greta Allen Goodridge, Linda Tony Brown, Richard Famolette, and all others whom we name before you now. Assure them that you are with them even now, a very present help in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, worthy to be exalted among the nations, into your mighty hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Hear our prayer for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have been dealing with the COVID pandemic, and we've not spent much time this October dealing with breast cancer awareness. Let's face it, most of us have been impacted by breast cancer. Maybe a close relative has had it. Maybe someone you know battled it and lost. Maybe you have had it or you are facing it right now. And so we pray today for this. Father God, Today we pray for the women who are going through breast cancer and their families, and we ask you to strengthen and to heal as you see fit. Lord, we know you want us to be in good health and to prosper. So Lord, use us to do the work you have, ha have for us to do, for we know time is getting short on this earth. And Lord, be with every woman who is sick and encourage them as only you can. You are a faithful God. You have shown yourself to be everything you say you are in your holy word. And we praise you for making our bodies, and you can heal them. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray together now the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.